power station needs to create a very high current in order to provide all of the energy to thousands and thousands of homes and businesses. Problem is that because these wires, even though they're very low resistance, they still have a resistance. And the power lost to heating is equals to I squared R, the current squared times the resistance of the wires. Some people think that they can calculate the power lost due to heating using V I and that V being 230 volts say, but that's actually not true because that PD, that voltage needs to be the PD across the wire. So we stick with I squared R. So we need to reduce the current. How do we do that? Well, we do that with transformers. Now, when you look at a transformer, it might just look like a big box, but with transformers, there's actually more than meets the eye. Transformers use electromagnetic induction to reduce the current that goes into the national grid. And then we have another transformer on the other side to increase the current again so that it's usable. What we have here is a primary coil wrapped around a soft iron core. And here we have our secondary core. This goes off to the national grid, whereas this comes from the power station. We have a certain current going in here. We're gonna call it I1. We have a different current coming out of here, I2. So how does it work? Well, we have a current going in here and we know that that produces a magnetic field. Now, what the soft iron core does is it actually acts as a sort of conduit, as it were, for the magnetic flux. Otherwise, the flux lines would just go out like that, but that doesn't happen. The soft iron core guides the magnetic field, as it were, and it guides it through this secondary coil here. By the way, this would work without the soft iron core because we would be producing a magnetic field anyway. Incidentally, that's how wireless charging works. These coils are just very, very close but they're not connected by a soft iron core. Now, be careful, there is no current flowing from here to here through the iron core. This is a wireless transmission of current, as it were. We have a certain voltage in the primary coil and a certain voltage in the secondary coil, induced in the secondary coil as well. And also we have the number of turns around the coil. How are these things related to each other? This primary coil is producing a certain magnetic flux density that is also going through the secondary coil here. However, remember that when we're talking about EMF induced, we're not just talking about flux, but flux linkage. So the number of turns has to be important. If the number of turns here is double than the number of turns that the field was created with, then it turns out that we're capturing, as it were, twice the amount of flux going through here that was created by these turns in this coil over here. So the number of turns on a coil is directly proportional to the voltage or the EMF induced in it. So we can say that the ratios of the voltages is equals to the ratio of the number of turns. So in other words, more turns equals more EMF. I can put it as crudely as that. So more turns equals a higher EMF being induced than the PD applied across the primary coil here. So the voltage has increased, but we know that we can't get energy for nothing. If this transformer was 100% efficient, then the amount of power supplied by the transformer by the primary coil should be the same as the power given to the secondary coil. If that's the case, then power is voltage times current, then the voltage times the current in the primary coil must equals voltage times the current in the secondary coil. This is a step up transformer because it's stepping up the voltage. By stepping up the voltage before it goes into the national grid, it's actually reducing the current, therefore reducing the heating effect in the wires, reducing the energy power lost due to heating in the wires. The other side, what type of transformer do we need? We need a step down transformer. So the voltage is usable 230 volts. What kind of current needs to go into the primary coil? Well, it needs to be an alternating current. It needs to be AC. If it was DC, then we would have this magnetic field being produced, but it wouldn't be changing. And because of Faraday's law, we know that if magnetic field isn't changing, then no EMF is gonna be produced. So AC produces a fluctuating and alternating magnetic field 
that induces an alternating EMF and an alternating current in this secondary coil. In an ideal world, this would be true. The power going in equals the power coming out, but there is some energy lost due to heating. Why does that happen? Well, it's because this magnetic field in the soft iron core actually produces its own mini current inside it as well. But we don't want that to happen because all that results in is heat being lost. So to increase efficiency of a transformer, we can do three things. We can use low resistance windings for starters. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? So we've got as little P equals I squared R happening in the coil itself. We can use this soft iron core easily magnetized. Finally, we can laminate the core. That basically means layers. What we do is we chop the transformer into lots and lots of squares like this, and then put them all together. And that actually reduces eddy currents. So by splitting the core into lots and lots of slices, then we are reducing the amount of current that can flow in the soft iron core itself, therefore less heat is lost. If you think I've missed anything or if you have any questions, please put a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Bye for now.